Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to show or hide controls in a Microsoft Access report using a macro without VBA. Ooh, ah, no VBA. Now, before all my nerd developer users complain and say, why are we using a macro? There are some valid uses for macros. Some companies, as you're going to see in just a minute from today's questioner, some companies don't allow VBA. You can lock down your system so that VBA just isn't an option. So you need to use macros if you want to automate anything with access. Another reason is if you want to distribute your database and you don't want to jump through all the security hoops, you can use the safe actions in macros and they don't trigger those security warnings or get disabled like VBA does. Plus, let's be honest, there are a lot of people out there that really don't want to become programmers. They don't want to learn VBA and macros are a way of, you know, simply automating some tasks like you're going to see in just a few minutes. And then, of course, there's access web apps. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. Oh, never mind. Microsoft canceled web apps. Microsoft was trying to add web apps where you can take your access database and put it online and run it in a web browser. And it just didn't work right. So they were they were pushing, hey, use macros because they'll work in web apps. And then they drop web apps. So all right, forget about that. But there's still some good, compelling reasons to use macros. Now, I'll be honest. I'm personally a VBA guy myself. I almost never use macros. But it's handy to know them, to have them in your toolkit as a developer, just in case. All right. So today's question comes from Henry in Bend, Oregon. See there, I pronounced it right this time, Oregon. Thank you for the feedback, Oregonians. And he's one of my gold members. He says, I need to be able to hide certain fields in a report based on the value of another field. For example, we do a lot with demographics. And if someone is in a particular state, then I need to hide certain questions from showing up. Unfortunately, my employer has locked down the systems and refuses to anyone use VBA in Microsoft Office. Is it possible to do this with a macro? Yes, Henry, this is one of those instances where it's, it's good to know macros. Um, if you can't use VBA, so let's see how to do it. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website if you want to. Now, for those of you who've been following me for any length of time, you know that I pretty much always stick to VBA for 99.9% .9 of what I do. So I have access set to automatically always open the VBA ed editor. So the VBA editor, say that 10 times fast. So what I'm going to do is go to file and then options. And then under object designers, I have this thing checked that says always use event procedures that pops me right into the VBA editor instead of asking me if I want the code builder or the macro builder or whatever. So turn that back off. That's the default setting. Turn it back off. If it's if it's checked on, of course, hit OK. It says you got to reopen the database, but you really usually don't have to. OK, now in my database. I've got a customer form. Customers can have orders and orders can be printed into invoices. Now, right now, I just got this little teeny checkbox there that says whether it's paid or not. Let's make a big label that says paid, real big, right? Paid so that if this is paid, we'll show that label. Otherwise, we'll hide it. We'll use the visible property. OK, so we'll use an if then block in a macro and then we'll use the set property command to change the property, the visible property on or off. All right, so the first step, go to design view. And I'm going to turn off this block down here on the bottom. We don't need groups in this one. All right, there's paid. I'm just going to slide you over to the side over here. We still need this value. All right, this guy's value is is paid. That's the field. All right, let's add another label. I'll just copy this one. Copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll slide that over here like this. We'll change the caption to say paid. All right, maybe make it a little smaller like that. Maybe make it red. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do to it, right? Okay, it's red. Let's give it a good name because we're going to refer to it. We don't want to call it label 25. Go to all. We'll change this to paid label. Okay, and if you want to set its property normally to no, it's not normally visible. Okay. All right. So if I save it, close it, preview it again. We don't see it because it's invisible. Okay, so how do I trigger it to come on if that order is paid? Well, we're going to use the build event for the section that it's in. Build event is just a fancy way of saying something that happens when access draws this section. Either it draws it on the screen or it prints it out. All right, so right click, go to build event. It's going to ask you what build do you want? This is what we just turned back on a minute ago. 
Normally, I go to the code builder to write VBA code, but we're going to go to the macro builder this time. Macro builder. Hit OK. All right. Unfamiliar territory in here. OK. So you got this action catalog over here. All right. If you don't see it, the button's right there to turn it on and off. Action catalog. Now, we want to say if is paid is true or just if is paid. You don't have to, you don't have to say equals true. Just is paid equals true is, is assumed. If is paid, then set that paid label dot visible, the visible property to true. Otherwise, else set it to false. So how do we do that? Well, here's an if block, get an if block, double click on if, that adds the if statement here. Okay, we're gonna say if is paid. All right, and there it is right there. You can just double click on it there if you want to. Access puts it inside of brackets for us, but we're good little access developers and we don't put spaces in our field names, right? Our field names, our table names, we don't use spaces at all. So we don't need to put the brackets on there ourselves. Okay, if is paid, now you could say equals true, but again, equals true is assumed. So you can just say if is paid, if that's true, all right, then do something. What's the action we wanna use? Drop this down, there's a whole ton of actions in here. Okay, now, if your concern is distributing your database, then don't turn on show all actions because there are unsafe macro actions too. The list that you normally see are generally safe actions. In other words, they don't trigger the security warnings and they usually don't get disabled. All right, now the property that we're looking for, and there's tons of these properties in here. I could, I could easily spend a half an hour going over each one of these, but we're looking for a set property right there. Hey, Adam, there's set temp bar right there if you want to use that one. Set property, okay, what's the control name? That's the label we just created, All right? The label is going to be my paid label. There it is, right there, paid label, double click on it. What's the property you wanna change? We're looking for the visible property. Where are you? Visible, right there. There's all the properties you can change, the color, the caption, all these things, okay? What's the value? Well, if is paid is true, then the value in here should be true, okay? But that's only half, we've only, only done half the work now. Because if it's not paid, we have to make sure that guy's false. Because if you have multiple uh, records in your report, which we don't in this one, but if you do, then you wanna make sure it gets turned back off if it's not paid, the next record isn't paid. So we're gonna add an else. All right, so we got if, this, then, do some stuff. Else means otherwise, if is paid is false. Same thing in here, we'll just say set property. What's the, what's the thing? Paid label, visible. And you can type most of this without having to click on it. And then false. Okay. And that's it. Save it. Control S. Close that. All right. We can shut all this down now. Save changes. Yup. All right. Let's take a peek. And oh, look, there's our paid. Okay. Let's go to a different order. This guy. And click on it. And it's not there, see? Isn't that nice? Now, one thing I do teach when I cover this in my normal class is that uh, you may need a refresh in there too because if you mark this paid and then open this up, it's still, okay, in this case it's showing, but sometimes that won't update because this isn't being saved to the, uh, to the table. And I think I handle that in the button. Let me see, right click, build event. And yes, I do handle that in here with a me.refresh. So if you're doing this straight with a macro, okay, uh, if you're using a macro to open that report, you might have to put a refresh in there. And again, this is something that can be done with a macro. Uh, if you use the, the command button wizard in the database, it will build those buttons using macros, all right? But again, I use VBA, all right? So now for your report, if you are in here and you open this guy up, right? And you've got like state in here as a field. You do the same thing up here, okay? Um, in your in your section though, you're gonna say something like if state equals whatever your state is, New York, like that. That'll be your condition, All right? Remember, New York is a, is a text string, so you have to make sure you put it inside of quotes, like that. Dates have to be inside of pound signs, all those things. Now, you knew it was coming. You had to have known it was coming. Now let me show you how to do this simple thing with VBA and show you how easy it is without using macros. If you're able to, obviously, yeah, you, you got yours turned off, Henry, but for the rest of us, 
let's see how we can do this with that. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to turn that setting back off again under object designers. I like event procedures. I almost never use macros myself. So let's come in here, design view. Now to get rid of that macro, go to the events section, see where it says embedded macro, select that, hit delete, and it's gone now. Okay, the macro is actually embedded inside the report. Now, once again, right click build event. This time it's gonna take me right into here. Okay, and I can now just come in here and say, if is paid, then paid label dot visible equals true, else paid label dot visible equals false, and if, and I'm done. See, once you learn VBA, how much faster that is and how much easier it is than going through all those menus and the macros. And I get it. Macros do make things easier for beginners, when you're, especially when you're not familiar with all the commands, right? That's why I, I take it slow in my classes. I teach a couple little commands here and there. You know, we, we go through a few at a time. You, you, don't, you can't learn the whole list of commands in one day, people. Now, if VBA is an option for you, if you're just scared of it and you want to learn it, go watch my intro to VBA video. Okay, it teaches you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And if you want to learn more about macros, I do have six different lessons in my full series where I cover macros. Now, this was back in 2013 when Access still had web apps. So I was all excited about web apps and I was going to make a bunch of advanced courses to cover macros because macros are supposed to port over nicely into web apps and then they canceled web apps, so I kind of canceled my advanced series. That's why there's only six of them, and then I went straight to the developer lessons where I cover uh, VBA. But this series does go over like benefits and limitations of macros, you know, smart macros, different events and event timing, things like that. So these are still some good lessons, and they're especially good if you can't use VBA, like if it's locked down in your office, or you want to distribute a database that you don't want to have to worry about features getting disabled, that kind of stuff. So these lessons are good if you do want to learn macros. Check them out. I'll put a link down below. But there you go, folks. There is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video 
that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.